Woj Bomb. agreed to come back out here with us because there is a lot to talk about and a lot has happened today. Uh, the NBA has announced now that Trevor Ariza, Gerald Green, both of those guys of the Rockets have been suspended two games for on, Gerald quote, Green. You just got signed for the rest of the year. Entering the Clippers locker room on Monday. Bread? Uh, Blake, CP3, James Harden, they will not be disciplined. Here's a little bit from Doc. Oh, I didn't think we were even concerned with that. I don't think anybody in our – we were never concerned that – any of our guys would be disciplined for anything. Well, you know, uh, it's legal to sit in your locker room. All right. So you broke the story <laughs> earlier, Woj. And uh, what are you hearing from both sides, Rockets and Clippers? Well, both sides, neither are really uh, happy with uh, all the findings in this investigation. The Clippers, uh, they are not fully accepting of the idea that Chris Paul was a peacemaker in this. The Rockets uh, are not fully accepting of the idea that Blake Griffin didn't target Mike D'Antoni on the sideline, but both star players avoid suspensions and, and they play on. Are you shocked by that a little bit? I mean, look, they're playing again February 28th, by the way. I just want to throw that out there because now whatever happens. And in how L.A.? Angry, how angry. Uh, I don't, is it in L.A. or are they in Houston? Oh, they might be in Houston. Uh, yeah. I, I wasn't surprised at the suspensions thrown out. I didn't think anything, anybody warranted really a suspension i mean they went through a secret I mean, we're tunnel. talking about an Old aggress- school. Like, like, like we're talking about they went in in an aggressive manner that is a like, weird that's wording a suspension now i mean but hey rules are rules the commissioner hands down the law it is what it is but you know i mean what is an aggressive manner well that's like you know i don't <laughs> I, I wasn't there so i can't really speak on it was punches thrown was people were was there pushing you know, what was going on, and, and from what I'm hearing, you know, CP3 was there, but he wasn't in... Was Pete there in a, the He word? wasn't there in an aggressive manner. I know? did not so, hear, in talking to people um, in the immediate aftermath of that, that night, being at the arena, and then after, Chris and Peacemaker did not come up on the Clippers' side, there's no question, but in the league's investigation, uh, I talked to Kiki Vandeway today, he said he interviewed over 20 people involved, he says people on both sides, both the Rockets and Clippers side, told him that Chris Paul was a peacekeeper in this. Um, I think there is some question on the Clippers side of who exactly within that organization would have said that to the league office, but uh, Chris will not be fined. He's certainly not suspended in this. I think the suspensions were warranted because a lot of times when you hand down discipline, it's not necessarily only for the action that took place. You're trying to deter people from doing it in the future. And while, to your point, Paul, they went to the locker room in an aggressive manner, you cannot be going into the other team's locker room post-game. Now, there has to be other people with responsibilities as well that I'm surprised it didn't happen. Teams, like if you're the Houston Rockets, you saw that this was a volatile situation. You the Clippers, you saw the exact same thing. Where's the security? Where's the oversight from the club? I'm surprised that that level of discipline didn't happen because there are a lot of people make to, responsible for making sure players get from the court to the locker room to the bus where everybody leaves. Well, yeah, you know, they, went through the, they went through the secret yeah, it was a passageway. Secret passageway. <laughs> who you think, who you, who you think showed the secret passage? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, this is an exit I used to go out after every game, <laughs> you know, to avoid media and <laughs> confrontation. Everything. And, and, and the so way, this is one of the few locker rooms that has that also. Well, it's the only locker room or the only building that has one team, the Lakers, is varsity, and the Clippers is JV. What, one witness in the Clippers locker room told me that when the Rockets were at the door, that when they looked up and, and realized what was going on, they saw both of the Clippers security, and, and the term they used, they were almost down like offensive linemen pushing through that door, pushing them through the other side, <laughs> um, that they felt that the Clippers security had kept that scene from escalating. Um, but I did ask Kiki Vandeway about was there responsibility from the Rockets side, the Clippers side, that the players found their way back in there, as you said, Paul, in a volatile game? And they said, based on the proximity of the locker rooms, the corridor there, they weren't putting blame on either team that, that the players got to the door. Well, the game, my bad, on the 28th is actually here again. I would imagine there will be security standing at all the secret passageway Ain't doors. Going on. <laughs> but but, it, but it Hold me back. it's a bizarre story. Do you think more should have been made um, concerning Blake and D'Antoni? Not at all. I don't think so because, like I saw, Blake was running down court. He's yeah. he got, the referee actually is right there, kind of got in his way. He's still on the court. Blake is still on the court. He takes a yeah. little step out of bounds, but 
is is D'Antoni, is he still in the coach's box? I mean, how, yeah. how far and is the coach's box? What, what Vandeweghe said to me tonight was that D'Antoni was right on the line, Blake was on the court, and that the in the league's view, the contact was minimal. I mean, it brushed his tie. We saw a tie move. Tie it wasn't move. like now, we, we saw D'Antoni right. go the into Rockets, the scores. Today. The Rockets feel that he targeted him, that it was intentional, that the contact was more than minimal. But um, I like the fact that Kiki in the league acted immediately. Unlike right. a lot of times we see in the NFL where these situations continue to be talked about for days and days in the media, they immediately, you can go. <coughs> My bad. Live TV again. And, and, live television. and it's a difference between having seven, six or seven days between games right. and teams having to play yeah. right away. They have Correct. to make decisions quicker than the NFL. Yeah. So shout out to Kiki. He, they, no, they, no they, they did a really good job of unpacking No mention it. of Austin Rivers, right? No mention of Austin Rivers. Okay. So but but he did nothing in the wrong. No, he just chirped. Yeah. He did nothing in the wrong. I mean, and, 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 and I have to say this. There's been a lot of slander on Austin Rivers' name the last couple of days. All you need to talk trash is a mouth and an opinion. Right. And he's getting paid millions of dollars to play basketball. He's a member of the Clippers. And just like Patrick Beverly or anybody else, they're on the sideline trying to pump up their teammates. Yeah. The thing is, sometimes when you know the guys – on the other teams, because you play with them, and you know where I'm going. Sometimes you know things to say that they really don't like that make it personal. I think that's the line that Austin probably crossed, which made Trevor Reza want to go possibly put his hands on him if he could. Right. There's no question that the Rockets who went toward the locker room, their focus was much more Austin Rivers than Blake Griffin. And Blake Griffin is just slightly bigger. <laughs> you know,